Okay, welcome back. So um, this is probably the last, uh, this is the final or um, completion uh, video for the fret slotting jig, rig, gizmo, whatever. Um, this is it in its entirety, uh, short of the blade. Um, this mounts onto the carriage of the CNC router and it will sit basically like this. And uh, you've seen, if you've been watching the videos, the router spins the, the shaft and turns a 90 degree turn with some spiral gears and spins a slitting saw. Um, for those of you who didn't watch the videos, tisk tisk. Uh, yes, I realize there are, I think it's 10 parts. This would be the, probably the 11th, uh, but this is the moment of project completion. Uh, we're going to set up and have it cut. Um, we're going to take some poplar and do some test cuts with it today to uh, get a sense of what I'm going to need to do for fixturing. Um, because it's all fine and good that you can cut these slots, but if you can't hold the board square to the axis of travel, and it's not flat and it doesn't move uh, or it moves or anything like that. If you count, you've got to be able to hold the board on the machine so it can do the cut accurately. So a good chunk of your accuracy uh, has a lot to do with how you hold your fretboard to the table. Um, and in this situation, I'm going to, I'm going to go with the easiest first because it's kind of how I like to work it. Um, the easiest is going to be, uh, starting with a square stock that doesn't have any taper to it, isn't radiused, it's a, a blank. And even that is, it's even further than that, it's just a thick board. It's way thicker than a fret, uh, fret board's going to be. Um, so this is like item one, easiest method of fixturing. If you've got raw solid wood that hasn't been uh, cut in any way, I mean, we could deal with the fixturing with a thinner board just as well because we're not going to be cutting through anyway so really the board thickness is irrelevant in this case the keys are going to be parallel edges that are in line and coplanar with the uh, axis of travel that the frets are laid down on so when you when you uh, cut the slot when the when the blade goes this way you want it perpendicular to the center line or the the axis of the the fretboard because you don't want to have your frets cocked sideways right so what we're doing is working out a fixture solution that will um, align with one of the axes and in the case of this machine I'm using the long axis as my index axis so each each slot will be some distance along the X axis which is my long axis. Along the X axis is where the slots will be run. They will be cut linearly along the, the, the blade itself will travel along the Y axis. So we want to make sure we get our board positioned so that when those slots are cut, they become perpendicular on the board to its length. To do that, we want to make sure the board gets lined up parallel with the X axis. So what I did off camera earlier today was I took the machine and I had it drill a couple of uh, quarter inch diameter holes along this edge. They're literally at the zero, it's the zero travel of this direction towards me. They're as far to, as near to me as they, the machine itself can get. Um, I did that because that for other fixturing or for doing a wider or a batch job, I wanted to have the most amount of available space. But because this sits on the machine and the axis of this is essentially limited to that as well and you've got a two and three quarter inch diameter blade if the axis were zero and that was its limit and you bumped up against it it could be kind of difficult to get a a good uh, cut through and clear um, the leading edge of the blade. So what you basically need then, or what I'm thinking I'm going to need, and this may not necessarily be how it works out, but these holes are allowing me to align, let's say we put a transfer punch 
I only have one quarter inch transfer punch, but I have several quarter inch bits, so we're going to use those. And let's take this scrap piece of plywood as a kind of a parallel, sort of in the machinist world. This would be a really big parallel. Um, and then we can take our board, and that puts our cutting out, you know, three or so inches away from that bottom limit or maximum edge. We could probably come further over. I think it's fine either way. Um, but what I'm trying to avoid is have a, have a case where I can't get all the way to the bottom and not bump. And it may not be a thing that I have to worry about too much. But we're basically we're going to use these two drill bits, push against this, push against this. So everything gets pushed against these, these reference holes. That should be a fairly good axis. Um, this board has been measured parallel. This edge that we're butting up against has been measured straight. So everything seems to be, a, uh, I've got the best case or the best hope for uh, getting things to line up. And now we just need to clamp this board to the table. And this board is super flat, thankfully, and very parallel with the table. So what I'm going to try is just some end clamping to see if it'll hold it and how well it does. If things move, we'll have to do something else. But that's kind of the, the gist, so we're going to get set up, get the board clamped up, get things parallel, get some stuff out of the way after that, and uh, then we'll try to run some tests after we get the, 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 the rig mounted to the machine. Um, I think that'll be it. So we have the board clamped up. You saw I was putting the parallel up, the parallel against it, but so we can see already the end clamping for real world not going to do well because it's bowing up. Obviously, I kind of saw that coming. I knew that was kind of going to happen. But uh, for running the first time this has ever seen wood, I'm going to leave it because I don't really mind too much. It's going to go down in very low, shallow steps anyway, so it's not going to cut very fast. So I'm not too worried there. Um, what I probably will end up doing, and it might work out best, is maybe a small vacuum platform to hold a thin fretboard down. That might be the better way to go. But for the purposes of this test, we'll, uh, we'll leave it like this. It's up about a 32nd down here. Um, it's not a critical cut. We're just going to make sure that we're uh, cutting the spacing correctly, I'm mostly testing the code, and that the machine can cut the wood. Um, so the next step we're going to do is we're going to get the machine... Uh, we'll get the uh, we'll get the slotting tool mounted to the machine and trammed in. That should take a little bit of doing. Uh, I suspect that'll take a little bit of work to to f suss out and get fussy with it. Um, I have a feeling it's going to be fussy. We'll see. Um, so that is what we'll do next. Okay. So we're you can see we're set up. We got the blade in place. It's on the machine. Got this quarter inch steel plate that should keep the indicator from moving around. You can see I tap around here. I'll zoom you guys in and you can watch the gauge. <clears throat> but we're basically going to worry about this direction of travel first and then we'll worry about up and down. Um, so there's this, this one, the Y axis, we're going to put the dial on and I've also got my dial test indicator in here but I think if I can get within a thou I'll be happy. Um, the dial test indicator will go within 10 thou and I think I actually have more run out than that on this blade. But So I'm going to move this this direction. I'm just going to have the axis travel. I'm not going to move the gauge, obviously, so that it stays in one spot. And we'll just pull it back, move over about two and three quarter inches, and then we'll set it back down and see how far off a zero we get. Right now, we've got we're pretty uh, pretty stable, pretty repeatably right around the zero mark here. So <clears throat> you'll be able to see that. I'm going to pull you guys in here real close, and you can watch the gauge as I move things around and we'll see how far off we are. So you can see the gauge here on zero. And I'm going to move the axis this way. But 
pulling this away. I'm going to slide over. And we'll go just, you know, kind of by eyeball. There. Now I'm going to make the, see that mark on the blade? I want to make sure I measure off that same spot just so we can eliminate the chance of any uh, major run out. And you'll see like tooth out over. So that just means, yeah, that just means we're about two and a half ish thou too far this way. So what we've got, I just walked in front of the camera. So what we've got to do is push the axis that way. I'm going to pull you guys back out. All right, so we're going to push the axis that way by about two thou or bring this axis this way by about two thou. It's not going to need much, so I've got these set screws in the back here that will push things around a little bit, but they um, need to have this top stuff snug or dialed down a little bit. Need the right size driver here. I'm just barely loosening these things. They're not going to get that loose because I don't want too much slop introduced. If they're too loose, they can, uh, they can flop around here. All right, <clears throat> after a little bit of tediousness, it took about, oh, 20 minutes or so of just tweaking, getting it dialed in. But now you can see we're on zero. I'm gonna pull this back, head forward. And then we'll bring this back around. And right there on zero. So I'm gonna call that trammed in pretty good for the Y axis. Now let's get set up to do the Z. Okay, we're all set up for tram and Z. This is going to be an interesting one. Wait to see just how far off. It's because I didn't do any attempt to, I made no attempt to make it perfect. So here's, uh, here's how bad the Z is. We are down by 40 thou. So we're minus 40 on that. So that means we've got to drop the front of this thing down quite a bit. Or sorry, we've got to raise the front, drop the back end of it down a little bit. Um, so we're going to get that done. It's going to take a little bit of doing. And uh, stay tuned. We'll come back and show you what we end up with. All right. After probably another 20 minutes or so of tedious, we're on zero there. And pretty much zero there. It's within a thou, I'd say. About a thou, because if you tap this just right, you can get it on there. So I think we're pretty close. I think that's close. Z is less important than Y anyways, because Z is just a little bit, so it might cut a little tiny bit wider, but not by much. It's a pretty tough tangent. Doesn't really matter. This is where we're going to call it good. And uh, we're done tramming at this point. I think we're going to call this as resolved as we want it to be at this point. So uh, next up is we're going to get this board cut. So stay tuned. All right. So now we've uh, we've trimmed everything in. We're good. Um, I've set zero to be the center of this top piece. The, ignore the rabbit. This is just some scrap. But the Z zero is the top of the surface. The Y zero is here in the center and the X zero is here. This is where the end of the nut should go. Um, and then we'll uh, see what the G-code does. So, okay, so we're all set up. I ran a single fret slot in midair to make sure that at least the boilerplate uh, G-code is safe, but uh, seemed to have did all right an inch above the surface. So I'm just gonna run 22 frets plus a nut and see what the heck happens. I may, uh, I may regret doing it going whole hog, but we're gonna have to find out one way, only one way too, so. 
here goes. We're going to probably need some dust collection at some point, but for now it's just going to gradually take a little bit away and we'll see what, what happens. So with any luck, the fret slot, the nut slot should end up right here at the zero. So we're going to find that out as well. Um, so stay tuned for a moment and uh, I'm going to put some hearing protection on because this thing is loud. Um, be ready. Here we go, everybody. First cut, number one. Literally the first machine cut with the G-code generator. Uh, number one, here it goes. If I sound really excited, it's because I am. It, uh, the damn thing works. It works by God. Let's get that machine out of your way so you can see this beautiful poplar <laughs> fretboard. The damn thing works. Woo, I'm happy. I'm very happy. I'm very happy. So uh, I'm going to bring the camera up here so you can see what, uh, what, pro what the final result was, but uh, the damn thing works. And there it is, the poplar fretboard. <laughs> so the nut slot looks like it might actually be exactly right. Uh, it could actually be a blade width off. I need to double check on that. But uh, as you can see, it cut slots and they appear to be about spaced right. I'm going to grab my strat neck and see, but one of the other things I want to double check is the uh, width of the slot as I require it. So my uh, fret wire wants to see around 23 thou, and that's what the size of the slot is, or the, the saw blade is. Um, but it's a little tricky to get that trammed in beautifully. And it looks like with a little mallet hit, I've got, it's a, it's a beautiful fit. I think it's a beautiful fit. So I put a feeler gauge in there and I got 24 to be kind of snug. 25 didn't want to go in without some force, force. So I think I can call that an acceptable slot width. But uh, yeah, I'm tickled pink right now. It's, uh, it's exactly what I wanted to have. The only thing that it could mess up is if I put it up against my strat neck and see how it does, but I am supremely encouraged. So I'm going to call the rig a success and complete. We'll uh, start on another project before too long. So the dang thing works. All right. Have a good one.